Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy Block. Uh, this is gonna be kind of a different video. Uh, I just woke up. Well, actually, yesterday I seen um, P Diddy, Diddy Cone, whatever, whatever is, whatever he wants to go by. Um, is getting sued for thirty mil, and uh, it's over the uh, him dating Cassie. You know, uh, Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie the singer. Now, when I tell you, I, I seen I seen a uh, shade room or whatever one of the media sites just post this right here, just this picture. But it doesn't actually. So I looked up the case number. You know, everything's public. So I looked up the case number and I read the whole thing. Um. Yeah, let's get into it. Um, it's pretty fucking dirty. And, uh, man, it's ugly. It's like some R. Kelly shit. I mean, and I, still to this day, you know, R. Kelly could be halfway innocent. I don't know. I, hey, don't, don't mark, don't mark anything I say. That's just my opinion. I don't know. But uh, that's a whole different topic, so don't even get on my ass about that. But uh, so yeah, basically, um, right here saying so Cassie hereby alleges as the for her complaint against the defendant Diddy Bad Boy Entertainment, Bad Boy Records, Epic Records. Home Enterprises LLC and Doe Corporations. Um, and there was another one I thought, but all right. Uh, so, defendant Sean Combe is a rapper and record executive, popularly known by his stage name Puff Daddy, P Diddy, or Diddy. Mr. Combs came to fame in the early 1990s with his record label, Bad Boy Records. Um, so, uh, he rose to prom prominence in his music and entertainment industry over the decades regularly referred to as a hip-hop mogul. In 2022, Mr. Combs received the Lifetime Achievement Award at the BET Awards during this acceptance speech. Mr. Co Combs stated, I have a special shout-out. Thank you, love, to the people that really were there for me. And he named off a number of people before adding, and also Cassie, which is going to come into play because... That's in 2022. That's fucked up. But uh, for he, he shouted out Cassie for holding him down through his dark times. Love. Weird ass motherfucker. But uh, the truth, however, is that Cassie, Miss Cassandra Ventura, was held down by Mr. Combs and endured over a decade of his violent behavior and disturbed demands for Miss Venture. The dark times were those she spent trapped by Mr. Combs in a cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. Among other violent and unlawful acts, Mr. Combs, one, raped Miss Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him. You know what, I'm going to go, hold on, let me go live while I'm doing this too. So some of my Twitch members can, can uh, catch up. Two often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Mr. Vin Miss Ventura, resulting in bruises, burst lips, black eyes, and bleeding. Blew up a man's car after learning that he was romantically interested in Miss Ventura. Forced, I'm just gonna say Cassie because I can't say Miss Ventura every fucking time. So forced Cassie to engage. In sex acts with male sex workers while masturbating and filming it with the encounters. Okay. And uh, ran out 
of his apartment with a firearm to pursue a rival industry executive whom he learned was nearby. That boy get beat down. Demand, demanded that Miss or Cassie to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is. I don't know really what that means. I let my girl carry her gun. She got her own gun. I let her carry her shit. If I can't, if I ain't got enough room for my big ass shit, she got a little shit and she'll hold that bitch. But um, introduced uh, Cassie to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and a substance abuse and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. This ain't even it. This ain't even nothing. So Cassie. And Mr. Combs, met Mr. Combs in 2005, 2005, and I just said 2022. But anyway, uh, when she was 19 years old, that's when they met. He was a 37-year-old motherfucker. <laughs> he signed her. He signed her to his label, Bad Boy Records, and within a few years, lured Miss v- Cassie into and. Astanius, Astastius, whatever, Tatatius, fast paced and drug fueled lifestyle, and into a romantic relationship with him. That sounds just horrible. Her boss, one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry, and a vicious, cruel, and controlling man, nearly two decades her senior. Um, Mr. Combs almost, uh, or pfft, I said almost, Mr. Combs asserted complete control over Miss Cassie's personal and professional life, thereby ensuring her inability to escape his hold. He provided unprecedented, unpre- how do I say it, unprecedented, unprecedented, avenues for success for the aspiring artist but in return demanded obedience loyalty and silence Ugh. throughout the relationship mr combs was prone to un- and to uncontrollable rage and frequently beat cassie savagely and you gotta remember this is before diddy's uh baby mama of his kids died so I don't even know what he was going through at this time must have been drugs or something but these these beatings were witnessed by Mr. Combs staff and employees of Bad Boy Entertainment and Mr. Combs related businesses but no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss and that's why she's suing all of them not just and shit I would too Following these episodes of hor- horrific abuse, Mr. Combs would immediately attempt to hide Miss Cassie the evidence of the violent rage. He often showered her with gifts following incidents of physical violence, a typical pattern of behavior by serial abusers. In addition to the physical assaults, Mr. Combs frequently reminded Cassie of his ability to cause serious harm whether by requiring her to carry his gun in her purse or by blowing up the car of a musician that was romantically interested in Cassie Kid Cuddy adding insult to injury Mr. Combs used illegally substances to threat and threats of violence to force Cassie into repeated unwanted sexual encounters with male sex workers. Over the years that Mr. Combs abused Cassie physically and sexually, she again and again tried to escape his tight hold over her life. Every time she hid Mr. Combs' vast network of corporations and affiliate in t- Entities found her and those who worked for Mr. Combs' companies implored her 
to return to him. Many went as far as explicitly state that her failure to return to Mr. Combs would hinder her success in the entertainment industry. She, or, um, when she believed that she had finally separated from her longtime abuser, she joined Mr. Combs for dinner after which he forced her into her home and raped her while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. That's fucking weird. Um, Cassie has now fully escaped Mr. Combs, um, but the harm that the assaults and sexual abuse he caused her to experience of nearly a decade will forever haunt her. She has required... An intensive medical or psychological care to recover from the trauma she lived through. She cannot, however, continue to live in silence about what she endured. Mr. Combs remains immensely amin- powerful and immensely dangerous. I hope I said that right. But Cassie therefore seeks justice for the decade of her life that Mr. Combs took away from her with threats of violence, excessive use of drugs, physical and psychological abuse, and sexual slavery. Gosh! <clears throat> according, according to Cassie, this action-seeking injunction, declar- declaratory and monetary relief against defendants in violation of federal sex trafficking laws... And I'm not going to go through all these. Um, I'll read a couple of them. Um, New York human rights laws. New York human rights laws. Uh, gender motivated violence. Human trafficking. Uh, sexual abuse. Cover up accountability. That's in California. Trafficking victims in California. Um, yeah, y'all can read all this if y'all want. Uh, yeah, so it gets deeper. What are we at? We're at page five, it's 35 pages. So, Cassie is a resident of the state of California and Connecticut, was deployed or employed by. Defendants Bad Boy Records, LLC, and Bad Boy Entertainment related in- entities um, at all relevant times herein. So Cassie met the definition, the de- what the fuck? Cassie met the definition of an employee of defendants under all relevant statutes. Okay, so yeah, she has to do basically whatever, you know say sure what Diddy says defended Sean Combs upon information and belief resides within the state of California at all relevant times herein P or Mr. Combs met the, the definition of an employer of plaintiff under all relevant statutes Defendant Bad Boy Entertainment is a music, media, and entertainment company founded by Defendant Sean Combs, which includes the record label Defendant Bad Boy Records, LLC. At all relevant times, Defendant was an employer of the plaintiff within the meaning of all applicable applicable statutes. Defendants Bad Boy Records LLC is a Delaware limited liability company with a principal place of business located in New York, New York. At all relevant times, defendant was an employer of plaintiff within the meaning of all applicable applicable statutes. Defendant Epic Epic Records is a New York-based record label owned by Sony Entertainment, a subsidiary of Sony Corporation of America. At all relevant times, Defendant was an employer 
of the plaintiff within the meaning of all applicable sta statutes. So what P. Diddy was an employer when it was relevant. Is that what it's saying? So defendant Combs Enterprises LLC in New York Limited Liability Company at all relevant times. Defendant was an employer of plaintiff with, within the meeting of the applicable statutes. Excuse my daughter for crying too. Okay, so this is where I think this is where it starts getting ugly. Um, so Cassie met Mr. Combs late 2005, 2006. After Mr. Combs heard Miss uh, Cassie's first single playing in the club and expressed interest in signing her to the label Bad Boys Records, at this time Cassie was 19 years old. Mr. Combs was 37. Within months, in February 26, Cassie signed a 10-album deal with Mr. Combs' record label. Miss Cassie's first album, Cassie, was released in August 2006, debuting at number 4 on the U.S. Billboard 200. To promote this album, Cassie made television appearances on MTV, BT 106 and Park uh, and suffered from significant performance anxiety during the appearances and press outlets were highly critical of Cassie's performances on the show. Mr. Combs, however, sought to rehabilitate his newly signed talent, Telly MTV. You could hear the nervousness in her voice, and to be honest, I kind of smiled at it because it made me really appreciate. I really love, I really love about her, or what I really love about her. She's a regular person. Just made me appreciate that she got nervous, and it's kind of cute to me, to be honest. You've, whatever. But while clearly. Paternalistic is nothing, I don't know if that's the right word, but it's, it's nothing that is, it was cute to him how regular Cassie appeared. Mr. Combs' comments rang true to some extent. Upon signing with Bad Boy Records, Miss Venture was quickly thrust into the spotlight and was unfamiliar with how... A, how to navigate her celebrity status. Mr. Combs' recognition of glorification of Miss Ventura's provided to set the groundwork for his manipulative and Perceive a romantic and sexual relationship with Miss Miss Cassie, a woman nearly two decades his junior. Yeah, I didn't read this part, so I'm kind of spotty on this. But within a year of signing to Bad Boy Records, Mr. Combs became deeply entrenched with Cassie's life. Almost immediately, inserted possession and control over her and inserting himself into all aspects of her career and her personal life. November 2006, Mr. Combs invited Cassie to perform his song, Come to Me, along with the, him at the MTV Europe Music Awards, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Mr. Combs walked around in a row with a drink in his hand, flaunting his lavish party lifestyle, his Newly signed artist during hair and makeup leading up to the performance, Cassie hairstylist and Mr. Combs makeup artist told Cassie that Mr. Combs was interested in Cassie. Um, Cassie shrugged it off the gossip and in fact expressed disgust. Wait, what? Disgust? 
given the large age gap. Oh, damn. I didn't read that neither. Yeah, between her and the president of her record label, emphasizing the age and power dynamic, which is facts. Um, early in her... Or early on in, in their working relationship, Mr. Combs positions himself as a father figure to protect Cassie by... See, when that shit started happening... Yeah, that's when you know. What, what do they call that? Grooming? Yeah, grooming. By the way... Or, by, by way of example, after returning to New York after a trip to Las Vegas during... Or, yeah, during which she endured a brief hospital stay, Cassie, who by was or by then was fully healthy, went out to the club with her friends. When Mr. Combs saw her out, he reprimanded her, telling her to go home and take care of herself. At this time, Cassie thought that her record label was looking out for her well-being and that Mr. Combs had her best in interest in mind mr combs also ensured he was intertwined with cassie's personal and social life for instance by living or by inviting himself to cassie's 21st birthday party in las vegas he also brought along famous musicians and producers thereby flaunting his celebrity status and influence in front of young and Impressible Cassie. Although Combs knew that Cassie was in a relationship at the time, and even though he was publicly in a relationship with Kim Porter, okay, yeah, Kim Porter, the one who passed away, RP, Mr. Combs nevertheless pursued Cassie at the after party in a hotel suite following. Cassie's 21st birthday party. Mr. Combs pulled Miss Cassie into a bathroom and force forcibly kissed her. Cassie did not consent to the unwanted con contact. She immediately ran out the bathroom of the hotel suite and cried. She told her best friend at the time what happened, but what was too scared to tell anyone else. At the Video Music Awards the following day, Cassie's boyfriend at the time joined her and Mr. Combs at the table at the awards ceremony. Mr. Combs became angry, telling Cassie that the invitation to the award ceremony was only for her and not for a significant other. Mr. Combs allures Cassie into a relationship. Yeah, this is where it gets ugly. Despite her clear rejection of Mr. Combs' advances, Mr. Combs continued to demand Cassie spend time with him, including for the weekend at Mr. Combs' residence in Miami and for nights out in New York City. On one particular night, September 2007, Mr. Combs insisted on taking Cassie Cassie, fearing that rejecting Mr. Combs, requested that, or requested, or what the fuck, request would have repercussions for her album deal with Mr. Combs and his company. So basically, she was scared that she, if she said no, it'd fuck up a deal. Bad Boy Records, uh... Mr. Combs picked up Cassie from her apartment in Manhattan in a blue luxury vehicle. Cassie was surprised that when she got into the car, Mr. Combs was already... What the fuck is this? In a bright... I I'm thinking he's like already fucked up or something. That's what that word means, but... He handed her a pill and told her to take it, and Cassie asked what the pill was. Mr. Combs dismissed her and told her she would like it. She later learned the pill was ecstasy, something Ms. Cass that Cassie had never before tried and did not want to try. This was the first time Mr. Combs got Cassie high. I mean, if she ain't want to try it, she ain't have to fucking take it, but hey, whatever. But, uh, 
Mr. Combs then proceeded to drive recklessly at a very high speed down the west side highway of Manhattan. Cassie was very scared but did not dare to object to Mr. Combs who appeared drunk, high, and agitated. Mr. Combs took Miss Ventura, Cassie, to an upscale lounge in downtown Manhattan where he proceeded to get into an altercation with the security staff who would not permit P. Diddy to enter pre presumably, er, presumably because he was belligerent. Cassie decided to go home, but for the remainder of the night, Mr. Combs messaged her, complaining that she left him high and alone. Aww. Poor guy. In early fall 2007, Mr. Combs flexed his power. In, so we're in 2007 now. He flexed his power and influence when he paid a promoter to create a fake flyer for a party hosted by Cassie. This fake posting allowed Cassie to have an excuse to go to Miami to get her away from her boyfriend by using her guys or whatever of legitimate events she had to attend. Cassie was stunned at how easily Mr. Combs was able to rec recruit others to lie for him. Man. Cassie was uncomfortable with the fake flyer, but because the request to go The request to go where was that to Miami was made by the owner of the record label, which would be his involvement, and because she was scared to go against his wishes and face repercussions of her nas nascent career, Cassie agreed to join Mr. Combs in Florida. During the trip, Miami, Mr. Combs provided Miss Ventura with copious amounts of drugs <sighs> a lot of drugs and uh, she became more intoxicated than she ever been in her life and her intoxication lasted throughout the weekend trip as she wanted Mr. Combs to continue to support her career she felt she could not refuse Mr. Combs urging her her to take more drugs after providing her with drugs. Mr. Combs had sexually intercourse with Cassie during this trip. Within two years of meeting Mr. Combs, Cassie found herself lured into a yeah. yeah, I can't say that word. Sorry, guys. An Im diet circle somebody in the comments tell me what that is of her boss the owner of her record label and one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry uh, Mr. Combs exerts control over Cassie's career and personal life from the very start of their relationship Mr. Combs exerted his power and influence over Cassie, the dynamic was fueled by their nearly 20 year age difference, as well as their relative positions in the entertainment industry with Mr. Combs considered a music mogul, Cassie at the very start of her career as an entertainment, as an entertainer, Mr. Combs aggressively and demanding approach to those he worked with made it impossible for anyone to challenge him and Cassie soon learned that Mr. Combs insisted on blind loyalty from everyone in his inner circle. Although Cassie saved up some earnings from her young modeling career, Mr. Combs' ostentatious display of wealth was intimidating her. Mr. Combs paid for things with 
wads of cash and would repeatedly tell Miss Ventura, Cassie, don't worry about money. I have money. Mr. Combs expensed lavish vacations for him and Cassie purchased a car for her, paid for her apartment, provided her with extensive amounts of designer clothes. 2008-2009, Mr. Combs began to rent an apartment in Manhattan for Cassie. The apartment was within walking distance of Mr. Combs' New York residence. He first showed Cassie the apartment by bringing her along with her parents. Cassie's parents were skeptical of the mogul, mogul's displays of wealth, but proud of their daughter's newfound success. 2010, similarly paid for an apartment for Cassie in Los Angeles, which was located about five minutes away from P. Diddy's house. He paid for many other apartments in California and also purchased a Jaguar around 2013 and 14. All aspects of Cassie's life were controlled or by either Mr. Combs or his manage management companies. Every event Cassie attended from travel to the makeup to the clothes was paid from directly by Mr. Combs. So she didn't have no money. Compounding all this all encompassing intrusion into her life, Mr. Combs secured his control over the young and impressionable Cassie by introducing her to a drug-fueled lifestyle that kept her complacent and compliment, compliant, compliant. My bad, y'all. Mr. Combs first introduced Cassie to opiates around, two, around 2008. Oh, I ain't read this. And would often have pills and other drugs out in the open like candy upon information and belief. Mr. Combs has been addicted to prescription painkillers and took ecstasy frequently. Ah, I didn't read that. At first, Cassie was given prescription, the prescription that Mr. Combs received from a doctor in Miami. Eventually, when Mr. Combs ex exhausted his supply of pills, he demanded that Cassie pro procure prescriptions from um, the Miami doctor in her own name. Mr. Combs also became deeply involved in Miss Ventura's personal life with his personal staff, attending day-to-day -day travel and other needs, including medical care on multiple occasions. P. Diddy, Cassie, personal medical records sent directly to his email address. For instance, Cassie being experiencing memory loss potentially due to excessive drug or head injuries caused by Mr. Combs beatings and described below. Her MRI results were provided directly to Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs also repeatedly arranged for his staff to drive Cassie to certain doctor appointments. In the way Mr. Combs exerted ownership of Cassie as another example of the ways in which he manipulated Cassie and ensured obedience early in their relationship. He asked Cassie what she called her grandfather when Cassie said that she referred to her grandfather as Pop Pop. Mr. Combs perversely insisted that she referred to him as that nickname. That's fucking disgusting. Um, Mr. Combs and Cassie's relationship becomes violent and abusive. Yeah, this is really where he starts beating the shit out of her. Um, what started as a whirlwind of celebrity meeting and drug and alcohol-fueled parties, however, quickly turned frightening and violent. Cassie also exposed to the intense violence that pervaded Mr. Combs' rise to fame. For example, on one occasion, 
when Mr. Combs and Cassie were using drugs together in his home, one of his security staff barged in and announced that Suge Knight, a longtime rival of Mr. Combs, was spotted at Mel's Drive in Diner in Los Angeles. Mr. Combs began to get dressed, retrieve multiple guns from the safe, and ran out of his home to where he believed Mr. Knight was dining. Um, Cassie became terrified and began to cry. On at least two occasions, Mr. Combs demanded that Cassie hold her, Mr. Combs' guns in her purse. Cassie had no familiar, famil, familiary, how the fuck do I say that, familiar, how do I say that, familiar, familiarity, familiarity, I know how to say it, trust me, but she wasn't familiar with the guns or any shit like that and uh, was petrified that the firearm would accidentally go off in her purse. There was no clear reason why Mr. Combs required her to hold guns except to reinforce to his young girlfriend that he was a violent, powerful, and dangerous motherfucker. Over the next decade, multiple times each year, Mr. Combs would violently beat Cassie, leaving bruises on her body. After every instance in which he beat Miss Cassie, P. Diddy used his money and power to orchestrate extensive efforts to hide the evidence of his abuse, including by hiding Cassie in hotels for days at a time to let her bruises heal. In one such instance, after a party with Jay-Z, Mr. Cone beat, Mr. Combs beat Cassie repeatedly in an escalade, including by kicking and hitting her. He forced her out of the vehicle on 5th Avenue in New York City. She was eventually able to hail a cab and get her to her apartment in Manhattan, where she cried in fear, realizing there was no one she could tell about what has happened at the hands of the incredible, powerful man. She spent the subsequent three days hiding in her apartment. In January 2009, Mr. Combs learned that Cassie spoke to another music manager at a party in Los Angeles. She became, he became enraged. Uh, she had hoped. Sorry, uh, where was I? She had hoped that uh, speaking to his manager would allow her to go forward to grow her career that Mr. Combs would be happy for, but instead he became extremely angry, pulled her out of the club where the party was taking place in the car, leaving the club. Combs beat Cassie, pushing her into a corner of the vehicle and stomping her in the face. Combs security staff Roger Bonds tried to stop the beating but was unable to de-escalate the situation. Why not? Um, when the car arrived at Mr. Combs' residence, Cassie attempted to run away, but Mr. Combs followed her and proceeded to again kick her in the face. Cassie was bleeding profusely and was ushered into Mr. Combs' home where she began to throw up from violent assault. Upon recognizing the damage she had done and the physical evidence of the abuse, Mr. Combs panicked and forced his staff to bring Miss Ventura to the hotel suite at the London Hotel in Los Angeles, where she required to stay for a week. During her stay, the injuries, as her injuries from the beating healed, Cassie began to fully realize that Mr. Crumb's, Combs' tremendously loyal network not only knew about and witnessed his assault, but also these, that these witnesses were not willing to do any meaningful things to stop Mr. Combs' behavior. She recognized 
that she was powerless and reporting Mr. Combs to the authorities would not alter Mr. Combs' status or influence but would merely give Mr. Combs another excuse to hurt her. Crazy. While the hotel, she asked to go home to her parents, but Mr. Combs wouldn't let her leave. She lied to her mother when they asked about the online gossip assault. Mr. Combs proceeded to instruct his assistant to purchase excessive amounts of gifts for Cassie which were delivered to her hotel room she remained trapped Cassie was terrified isolated and unla unable to see a pathway out of Mr. Combs abusive hold on her life she found herself becoming numb to the abuse and she was experience that she was experiencing and became entirely Behold, Mr. Combs demands her way entirely beholden to Mr. Combs' hands. She began to blindly follow his instructions out of fear of again being on the receiving end of vicious beatings. By Mr. Combs' own admission, his relationship with Cassie was like Bobby and Whitney, a clear acknowledgement of a unequal power dynamic and excessive domestic violence that per permitted permitted their relationship from the outside looking in Cassie had heard others refer to her relationship with Mr. Combs as akin to Ike and Tina her volatile and abusive partner who also owned her label and therefore held her future and success in his hands had fully exerted control over every aspect of her life. Mr. Combs forces Cassie into sex trafficking. Within a few months of the beginning of a romantic relationship with 40-year-old Mr. Combs, the 22-year-old Cassie felt beholden to his whims and demands while in new york city mr combs could or mr combs told cassie that he wanted to engage in a fantasy of his called voyeurism mr combs said that it would turn him on if he saw cassie with another dick this man is fucking weird the first time Mr. Combs hired a man and brought the man into Los Angeles home, the man, Mr. Combs and Cassie, wore masquerade, masquerade masks and ingested drugs. Mr. Combs directly or directed Cassie to perform sexual acts with a man while Mr. Combs watched them. He masturbated while he directed Cassie and the man to do specific sexual acts the entire the entire encounter lasted multiple days oh my gosh Mr. Combs began to call the arrangement a freak off or an FO he would repeatedly tell Cassie at random moments that he wanted a FO and Cassie was eventually expected to felicitate the location and the hiring of the male sex workers at certain points Cassie and Mr. Cohn's relationship he would insist in an FO weekly Mr. Combs would repeatedly tell Miss Cassie that this is this practice was our thing our secret FOs would often take place in hotel suites, including the Trump International Hotel, Beverly Hills, the London Hotel in Los Angeles, the Intercontinental Century City, the Inter Intercontinental Atlanta, the Intercontinental in New York. Y'all get it. 
On one occasion around 2013, Mr. Combs had an FO set up at an Intercontinental Hotel in New York, after which he was charged with tens of thousands of dollars in damages by the hotel upon information and belief Mr. Combs' chief and staff, Tony Fletcher, paid the invoice charged by the hotel. Cassie was eventually instructed to use websites and escort services to find male sex workers to participate in these FOs. Mr. Combs told Miss or Cassie to search up for large black penises in quotations on the website. Um, sometimes Mr. Combs would pay to fly the male sex workers to his location, including to multiple cities in the United States as well as aboard. He required Cassie and his staff to help him make these arrangements. Mr. Combs, Mr. Combs' assistants would help to set up the FOs, including by setting up the hotel suites with baby oil and astragalide. Mr. Combs always supplied uh, Cassie and the sex worker with copious amounts of drugs before the, doing the FOs. Cassie was given ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, which I don't know what that is. If you know what that is, type it in there. Uh, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol in excessive amounts during FOs, uh, which allowed her to disassociate during the horrified horror horrific encounters it became common it became a common place to get iv fluids in the days after an fo to recover from the excessive substances pushed upon her cassie required to dress up in a lingerie for a fo mr combs insisted she wear white nail polish to contrast her nails with the skin of the black men he hired to have sex with her. During the FO, Mr. Combs would instruct Cassie to pour excessive amounts of oil all over herself. Mr. Combs then would instruct Cassie and the sex workers to speak to each other and then would specifically tell Cassie where to touch the sex worker Mr. Combs would say things like, grab that big black dick, <laughs> oh my gosh, and asked her, how does it feel, uh, as he directed her to perform for him. I don't know if anybody knows, but uh, she is now dating a white guy. Um, during the FOs, in addition to directing Cassie and masturbating, Mr. Combs would use his phone, laptop, and tablet to film Cassie having sex and or with the hired sex worker. He treated the forced encounter as a personal art project, adjusting the candles he used for lighting to frame the videos he took. While Cassie quickly deleted any photographs or video of sex acts if they were taken on her phone, Mr. Combs repeatedly made clear that he retained many videos of Miss or Cassie during FOs, even the ones that she deleted. Mr. Combs would tell Miss Ventura that he was able to. Hey, is something burning? Sorry. Even if she deleted the videos on one occasion, he sat next to her on a flight and made her watch the video she thought she had deleted, reinforcing her inalability to escape and immense power he held over her. Mr. Combs would pay the male sex workers a few thousand dollars in cash for their services. During some FOs, Mr. Combs would become extremely intoxicated and would hit Cassie in front of the male sex worker. 
Cassie would repulse was repulsed by Mr. Combs' demands, but between the physical beating and recognizing his incredible power and incredible temper, um, Cassie became petrified of her partner and boss and felt that she could say not say no. He even would present her with lavish gifts prior to or in the middle of F.O. seeming acknowledging the ways in which these four sexual encounters cons 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 whatever worked for Cassie and he needed to compensate her for this work. At one point he had given her so many designer bracelets for F.O.'s and immediately following his brutal beatings that she felt that she was shackled by his presence. Yeah, that sucks. Frequently her anxiety before an FO would become so great that she could become physically ill. Sometimes to the point of vomiting. While kneeling over the toilet, Mr. Combs would shame her into performing for him, eventually forcing her to get up and proceed the encounter. Gosh damn. She knew firsthand that telling Mr. Combs that she did not want to engage in FOs was met with anger and violence. In addition, any suggestion that Cassie would refuse the FO or otherwise report Mr. Combs' abuse was met with ultimatums by Mr. Combs who would say that Cassie could go not go to the police because she had a lot to lose. Around August 2015, man, what did we start at 2006? For August 2016, for example, in the middle of a surprise birthday dinner for Cassie, 29th birthday, yeah, 10 years. Mr. Combs insisted that Cassie leave the party and go to the hotel for an F.O. What the fuck? When she expressed that she did not want to go, Mr. Combs had Miss Ventura cornered by his security staff in order to force her to leave with him. After, his, after this FO, Mr. Combs went back to the hotel room they were staying in where some of Cassie's friends were already hanging out. Mr. Combs was severely intoxicated and at one point during the party, wait, at one point of the night, picked up one of Miss Ventura or Cassie's friends like a child and dangled her over the balcony of a 17th floor hotel suite. Cassie and her friends were scared. Where was I at? I forget where I was at. What the fuck? Yeah, right here. Uh, they were scared Mr. Combs' erratic behavior, but Cassie was hev heavily sedated because of the drugs she took to participate in the FO and therefore was unable to respond to Mr. Combs' terrifying behavior. The FOMs became work for Miss Ventura. And despite her protestation, pr protestations, Mr. Combs insisted on these. What the fuck? Stage and four sexually encounters between various sex workers. All right, y'all can read that. I I can't read all these big ass words, but. All right, so Miss Ventura tries to escape the abuse. Anytime she would try to create distance between her and P. Diddy, he used his networks to find her and convince her to return. On multiple occasions, Mr. Combs and his employees lured Cassie back. 2011, during a rough patch, Mr. Combs 
and Cassie relationship had a brief relationship with musician Kid Cudi. When Mr. Combs returned from a trip, he demanded another F.O. She, she, whatever. During this F.O., Mr. Combs found... Mr. Combs found Miss Ventura's phone and found the emails between her and Kid Cudi. Uh, Mr. Combs became enraged and proceeded to place a manual corkscrew between his fingers and lunged at Cassie. Cassie ran away to stay at Kid Cudi's home to escape Mr. Combs' wrath, wrath whatever. Soon, therefore, one of Mr. Combs' staff members told Miss Ventura that he needed to just talk, even though Mr. Combs was enraged, feeling like she could not escape Mr. Combs and his network of enforcers. Miss Ventura returned to Mr. Combs. He hit her several times and then kicked her in the back as she tried to run out the door. She went to her parents' home, Connecticut, pictures of the bruises. I think some of y'all may remember that report a while back ago. Uh, February 2012, Paris Fashion Week, Mr. Combs told Cassie that he was going to blow up Kid Cudi's car and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when it happened. Around that time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. Cassie was terrified and has, as she began to fully comprehend what Mr. Combs was both willing and able to do to those he believed had sl slighted him. In 2015, she spoke to a popular music manager and after the party at the Hotel Suite in Las Vegas, Mr. Combs saw her speaking to this manager and sternly told her to step into the bedroom adjoining the suite in the bedroom severely she ran from corner to corner trying to avoid mr combs beating and kicking when she tried to look back she tried to lock herself in the bathroom he pushed through and put punched and kicked her while she was curled up under the toilet her screams drowned out by the loud music playing outside when Mr. Combs head of security assistant saw Cassie after the assault, even they began began to cry. That's how bad it was. I do remember reading this part. Uh, Cassie had two black eyes, a burst and bruised lip, and huge welt on her forehead. Upon seeing the results of the vicious attack, Mr. Combs immediately took steps to conceal his wrongdoing forced Miss Ventura to stay at his home in Humbly Hills along with one of his sons while there. Mr. Combs FaceTimed her, told her to, and stated, you gotta go up and put some makeup on. You can, my son cannot see you like that. She did put makeup on after her or after Mr. Combs demands. Cassie felt like she had no choice but to obey her abuser. Even though security guards, assistants, friends saw the situation she was in, no one dared to help her or speak up on the behalf. She therefore had no choice but to remain whatever. Later in 2015, while shooting music in Cape Town, South Africa, being a flirtatious re relationship with an actor she spent new year's eve with this actor but mr combs soon found out called the actor threatened him after preceding the call cassie and oh wait the actor proceeded to call cassie to tell her you really need to call mr combs and around march 2016 during and F.O. They're still doing these fucking F.O.s and she's got a boyfriend. It's crazy. 
at the Intercontinental Hotel in Century City, Los Angeles. Mr. Combs became extremely intoxicated and punched Cassie in the face, giving her a black eye. After he fell asleep, she tried to slip out the hotel room, but as she exited, he woke up, followed her into the hallway, yelling, grabbed, grabbed at her, then took a glass vase in the hallway, threw it at her, causing the glass to crash around them as she ran to the elevator to escape she managed to get into the elevator and when she got to the lobby quickly took a cab to her apartment upon realizing that her running away would cause mr combs to be even angrier with her and completely stuck in his vicious cycle of abuse she returned to the hotel with the intention of apologizing for running away from her abuser when she returned to the hotel, security staff urged her to get back into the cab and go to her apartment, suggesting that they had seen the security footage showing Mr. Combs beating uh, and throwing glass at her in the ho hotel room. Upon, I believe, Mr. Combs paid the Intercontinental 50 grand for the f hallway security footage that evening. After Cassie left her home in Comstock and went to hide away at her friend's home in Florida, James Cruz, president of Bad Boys Management, tracked her down and told her that her single would not be released if she didn't answer Mr. Combs' phone calls. Oh, man. A woman who worked at Sony Music reached out to her with a, simul with a similar ultimatum concerning her record. Incredibly, Mr. Combs even convinced one of his attorneys to call Miss or Cassie. At the time, the lawyer told Cassie that it is in your best interest to call Mr. Combs back each time. Cassie tried to run away. Mr. Combs and his powerful network would force her back in. Mr. Combs' tight hold over her life had irreparable damage to her friendships. Around 2018, when Miss Ventura was with her friend Carrie Morgan in her house, and Mr. Combs used a key to get into the house unannounced, and he and Miss Morgan had an altercation during which Miss, Mr. Combs threw a, a hanger at Miss Morgan. Upon information and belief, the incident resulted in settlement between Mr. Combs and Miss Morgan. And Miss Ventura ended up paying Miss Morgan additional funds in an attempt to resolve the dispute between her close friend and her abusive controlling boyfriend. What the fuck? The relationship between Cassie and Miss Morgan had been strained since this time. Damn. Seeing the extreme measures of Mr. Combs took to keep a tight hold on Miss Ventura and isolate her from the support network and having experienced the repercussions of rejecting his demands Miss Ventura felt that saying no to Mr. Combs would cost her something her family, her friends, her career, or even her life Mr. Combs rapes Cassie by 2017-2018. Gosh, damn. From 2006, Cassie became desperate to leave Mr. Combs and his abuse of her and recognized that if she stayed with him, she would never be able to have a successful career or ever be physically and mentally safe. And therefore, became determined to completely break away from Mr. Combs and his cycle of abuse and made 
concerted efforts to avoid him. September 2018, she joined Mr. Combs for a dinner at an Italian restaurant in Malibu. Uh, she believed would be a discussion about concluding their relationship for good. After dinner, Mr. Combs returned to which was paid for by Mr. Combs and forced himself into her apartment, tried kissing her. She told him to stop and attempted to push him off. Mr. Combs forcibly pulled off Miss Mitchell's clothes and unbuckled his belt and proceeded to rape her while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. I'm probably going to have to bleep that out. But soon, therefore, um, Cassie took steps to completely separate herself from her longtime abuser, including by leaving the home that he paid, paid for and returning the car that he purchased her. Despite moving away, Miss Ventura's address was posted online in 2019, leading fears of her safety. And, um, during the months, Mr. Cone, wait, Cassie, who was under immense during, or immense duress during the months after Mr. Cones raped her, took all steps possible to entirely remove herself from her abuser, including by entering into contracts to end her second record deal with Bad Boy Entertainment. Mr. Combs sexually Daddy, physically abused Dad, has cost her life long. So basically the rest is talking about her. Daddy, Hold on, baby. You know trash? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically the rest of it, you guys can look up the case number. Um, she basically goes to a rehab center she was addicted to drugs because of him is basically what this is going to say uh rehab for the trauma um abuse sex traffic she, tra sex traffic sh trafficking she endured um yeah and then it basically just says all the charges of what and who I mean, y'all can read all this shit. I basically read it off for you, but, um, yeah. So this is all just basically what they're getting charged with, which is a good 10 pages. I don't really think I need to read anymore. Um, everybody get the picture. But yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, my bad. I ain't see y'all was. Yes, sir. Show him. What kind of horror story are you reading? What is a FO? GHB is something I hear a lot here, but never really. Wow, poor woman. Yeah, you don't know who Cassie is? Cassie the singer. This is a f fictional story, I hope. No, this is just came out. Wow, so sad. Yeah, it's a true story. Yeah, this is a, this is a real... This is a real... Uh, If I can scroll up fast and shit. Yeah, this is a real um, case. So, Cassie, right here, Cassandra Ventura versus P. Diddy and all his record labels and shit that he owns. But, yeah, man crazy uh he's in trouble she's she's uh she's 
She's uh, suing for thirty million. So hopefully she gets it. That shit's crazy. But I was making this shit for my YouTube. Thought I'd tap into my um to my streaming. Uh hope y'all enjoyed that little reading. I suck at reading, but hey. That story's a motherfucker. But uh yeah. Catch me on uh YouTube. I'm gonna post this up so everybody else can get a little taste of it. And uh yeah, I'll be back on later. And yes, I do got you, bro. Don't worry. Don't go crazy. I got you. I got. I got the fifteen dollars for you. Somebody else can vouch for me, man. I, I sent. I sent all my followers money. It's just uh, cash app being weird lately. So I got you though. I'll uh, I'll holler at y'all whenever I get back on. Yo, peace. <laughs>